the aspects of this research for Interior Biennale would become a book. Um, and we decided to call it The Quantified Home, which is a play on this idea of the quantified self, um, which is uh, kind of common in, it, 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 it's uh, uh, extremely current in, term, in technology circles about um, how the devices that we wear on us are continually monitoring us. And so it kind of is taken more from the final uh, moments of this research. Um, and the book was divided into a number of different moments from, uh, for example, this moment from uh, before uh, the, the First World War until the 1970s, from dream to bus, this kind of progressive uh, ambition, the climb towards the idea of um, a collective dream that, that w that's, I think, very clearly expressed in the kind of mid-20th century urbanism of America in which the home was central to this. It was the kind of a centerpiece of a certain ideology of individualism, of in, in, individual, on the one hand, conformity of, uh, uh, of, of, of a certain uniformity um, and of belonging within a certain social class, but also, on the other hand, the idea of individualism and an individual ambition. Um, and, and, and so that through this book, we began to kind of unpack also from a statistical point of view, from the point of view of data, uh, what was, um, uh, how over, through a certain period of time uh, that in this um, instance kind of ranges from uh, uh, the middle, at the kind of end of the 19th century up until the present, what is, for example, the, um, the, the value of one square meter of land uh, or of real estate um, in different countries around the world. Uh, so uh, here, um, taking a number of Western economies such as Australia, Spain, um, France, the UK, um, Ireland, and so on, uh, a dynamic that we all kind of in intuitively are familiar with becomes extremely clear how in this period there's kind of a, uh, from the 1950s onwards there's a gradual moment of growth and then around the 1970s, towards the beginning of the 1970s, there's a kind of a, a, a impennata, it kind of moves toward, very rapidly towards uh, upwards uh, and then uh, here it's always highlighted 2007, 2007, which is almost invariably the peak. And what happened in, again in 1968, 1970 was um, an incredibly important historical fact that's completely underestimated. Um, Fannie Mae, which is uh, a company, a real estate, uh, uh, a mortgage, a, a lending bank basically in the US, uh, one of the two big federal banks of the US, Fred, Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae, um, Fannie Mae was founded at that point, um, and it was founded with the explicit intention of providing mortgages to working uh, class or middle class families, especially middle class families. Um, and F uh, Fannie Mae, which was, uh, 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 F Freddie Mac rather, which was pre-existent, that had existed since the 1920s, uh, but that had basically been a, a bank that would make loans of different kinds, was also transformed into a competitive entity that would compete on the marketplace actually with Fannie Mae to make it, to give mortgages to um, uh, to working families, and the reason that was so important is partly because it um, it introduced a kind of an idea of um, capitalist uh, competitiveness into the the, the lending process, uh, but on the other hand, it also gave access to families to properties of a much higher cost. It, uh, it was basically a, a stepping stone to actually be able to pay a lot more for one's dwelling. And the, the result, I think the, um, uh, the consequence of that is incredibly clear when you start to look at uh, from the 1970s onwards, that's when actually this, um, this the, 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 the value, the, the, the market value of property really starts to take off. And in fact, it's what makes possible um, things like this, these peaks of that, uh, uh, of that sheer um, extraordinary value, which of course would never have been um, possible without the mortgage industry. If you weren't actually able to pay that amount of money for your property, you'd, of course there's no way that you'd be able to, um, uh, to, be, to be able to, the, the market would be a completely different one. And so what became, started to become apparent there was a sort of inter very interesting convergence between the property, between property, between real estate, between the built envelope of our existence, which is the home, and the market. And this is something that kind of increasingly kind of kept returning as a theme and that became one of the kind of central uh, uh, directions of investigation of the book. Um, and then fast forward to now, um, I think 
what uh, is what what kind of also um, was one of the inspirations for this book was a very intuitive uh, the, the kind of intuition just or the or the empirical observation of the way in which we ourselves live um, but also many of the people around us um, a, a life which is much less rooted in uh, a single place or in um, a, a, the, the notion of the home as an emblem of one's rootedness one's solidity one's uh, even financial well-being, and a much greater sense of mobility in which one is continually moving around the world, uh, which of course is also a product of cheap air airfares and the ability to um, travel much more easily than one, once before. And as a consequence of that, also kind of a knock-on effect into the kind of design that we produce today, that we consume today. Uh, and of course, a in that sense, I think a very significant fact is something that took place just after the turn of the millennium, um, in which the Bible, which had previously been the most um, reproduced book, the, the book that was printed in greatest numbers every year, was for the first time overtaken by the IKEA catalog. Um, and that is still the case today. The IKEA catalog is printed uh, more than the Bible. Uh, but it's not just printed more, it's printed by now six times more, eight times more. And every year that number is, uh, is increasing um, exponentially. Uh, and so, in the, in, in, in the context of all of this, we kind of can continue to dig for these numbers. And, and just to create, uh, together with um, Marco Ferrari and Elisa Pasquale of uh, the Studio Folder, um, who did the design of the book and um, uh, pr produced the infographics for it, to take numbers and try to visualize in a very sort of dry, very uh, uh, deadpan, detached manner, what actually some of the kind of pure data um, related to the home around the world so for example, this is, uh, we decided to look at what $50,000 could buy you around the world in different countries, so in uh, or in different capital ma major cities around the world. So for example, in Dar es Salaam, uh, that's how much um, you could get uh, compared to Cairo, which is that much. Um, and then as you start to go up the um, spectrum, you kind of come to Bermuda's here, Taipei, Sydney, Luxembourg, Toronto, Helsinki, Stockholm, and then these ones just became so small that we actually had to kind of blow them up. Uh, so this is, um, uh, this one is Mumbai, Paris. And we're always talking about the very, very center of town. So it's not like in the periphery somewhere. Um, and then right down to uh, Monaco, which is the, the most expensive per square meter, where you could actually only buy 0 0.5 square meters. And the second most expensive, which is London. Um, and, and so that, of course, when you start to look at that, there's all sorts of things that can be taken out of that. The, the idea of the global metropolis or, or certain parts of New York, for example, which are also extremely um, high priced. Uh, what, what does it actually, what, what's going on here? What's at play? What are the market forces that are um, shaping a condition of this kind where there's such an extreme disparity um, in, in economic terms between these different uh, conditions? But at the same time, we also wanted to uh, not be solely uh, allow ourselves to be completely taken away by fascination with numbers. Um, and so uh, we had the privilege of working with your artistic director, Gianluigi Recuperati, to um, produce a series of, uh, to commission a series of short uh, stories, essays of simply, I don't know, maybe it was 100 words, 200 words, um, not much more than Twitter length that could somehow capture um, a, a different dimension, which is the very kind of personal, subjective dimension of the home, the idea of memory, the idea of um, the poetic of habitation. Uh, and Gianluigi w wrote one of these um, himself as well, which is uh, incredibly beautiful. They're like a form of flash fiction that uh, drops into the book uh, periodically. And so all of this began to point towards something quite a very precise idea, uh, and a very uh, what I think is um, an incredibly interesting phenomenon, which is the idea that actually the square meter, the, which is what um, is the kind of typical, if you're looking maybe when you came to Milan and you were looking for an apartment, the first thing that you would have always consider, how many square meters is this? Uh, what is this, uh, uh, each square meter that you could kind of, maybe you get a little bit less light, but you get more square meters, or maybe a little bit further out, uh, but you get more square meters. So this idea of the square meter as almost a new form of currency, something that um, is a little bit like the euro or the dollar, uh, something that's one of the few fixed points of our existence that we're continually in search of space, this kind of uh, uh, living in increasing, under increased pressure. And it's almost as though uh, the square meter is almost being 
squash that's being scaled continuously. Uh, the, 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 the more time passes, the more pressure is being exerted onto this small um, piece of space. Again, over time, this is research that was done by um, Piketty for Capital in the 21st Century, but that we, um, he made all of his data available, and so we spent quite some time uh, reinterpreting it to read it in the context of our own research. Um, and so, for example, the proportion of house of cap, if, if one considers the idea of capital, what actually capital um, within our economy, our economy, the, 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 the wealth of any country, the total capital of any country is, consists of a number of different um, categories. And um, comparing the, uh, the, the relationship over a very long period, historical period between the composition of capital of land um, in an agricultural economy, for example, with housing capital, the proportion in the total GDP, the, the total wealth of a country, there's a, a, an extraordinarily um, direct inversion between land, which kind of gradually, gradually loses in value. Uh, of course, the land isn't getting smaller, it's the same amount of land, but housing capital going in more and more and more and more, more and more and more and more. Um, and so that, uh, that, that really kind of pointed to this idea that actually the home, and, and one very interesting fact is that the main activity of banks, apart from lending, the, the thing that banks do the most actually, is lend to each other. But after doing, after that, and I'm speaking about Europe in general, the second uh, biggest um, market sector for them is lending to us in order for us to be able to buy a home. So, in fact, the home, us and our need to inhabit, to live somewhere, is actually propping up the entire banking industry. And, we, of course, we all know how important the banking industry is, especially in a city uh, like Milan, for example. Um, and so, that, this idea, the, the, so the deeper we kind of became, became, the more we became interested in the relationship between capital and the home, the, the, in, the, the market and the home, uh, the more interesting things began to emerge. And of course, if we think about the present, and we look at it from a slightly less um, a direct view than simply how amazing Airbnb is because it allows us to go anywhere in the world and to stay anywhere we like and to avoid hotels, what's incredibly interesting is that Airbnb is actually in many ways, or not Airbnb specifically, but many of the uh, technology-driven companies that are working to connect us all to one another. One of, their one of the consequences of the rise of this market, whether it's intentional or not, is that it is actually adding a completely new chapter to this history of the home becoming an instrument within the financial industry, within the, within the, at, at the home as being part of an industry. And the Airbnb is doing that specifically by actually making us all into micro-entrepreneurs of ourselves. Uh, we are all able, whenever we have a home and we have a, a, a room that is... <laughs> here we have uh, Tamar and Martina from Space Caviar who are central to this process, so uh, you should uh, come and uh, uh, chip in. Uh, the, uh, the, what, what Airbnb is actually doing is transforming us into um, entrepreneurs who are able to take any space that's maybe disused, just for, even just for a very brief period of time, or for uh, maybe if we're, uh, we decide to move to another country, um, to sublet, for example, our apartment. And of course, that on the face of it, there's nothing wrong with that. There's no, uh, it's actually very convenient. It allows us to pay the rent while we're abroad. But what it's actually doing is just as the mortgages, the mortgage industry, the invention of the mortgage industry in the, late, in the early 1970s, allowed us to reach slightly higher in terms of the value of uh, the property that we could access, Airbnb is doing the same. It's actually giving us the instrument to be able to uh, pay even more rent because we can, uh, a lot of, um, it's actually very interesting, in recent years, some of my friends who have been moving to New York have been intentionally uh, going for properties that they'd never have been able to afford on the basis that, well, I'll, sub I'll sublet a room on Airbnb. So it's actually allowing them, giving them the instrument to pay more by transforming that space which was their own most personal, it's, it's possibly the most intimate space, the only intimate space that you have into an industry.